three. Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor. Today, I'm so excited because we have Kimberly Power on the show, and she is a coach, and she helps children uh, with ADHD. She helps children with dyslexia, children with disabilities, and she helps. She has a great program to teach them how to reprogram their brain when it comes to reading, comprehension, understanding things that are usually very difficult for people with disabilities, such as the ones we mentioned. It become life becomes very difficult if you don't understand and you don't you can't comprehend things and you don't see things the way other people see things or you can't focus and and lots of other aspects that she's going to go on to, into today. So. So I'm going to give the floor to Kimberly and she is amazing and she's going to tell you a little about herself, what she does, and then we're going to talk a little bit more about how to reprogram your child's brain, which is amazing. So Kimberly, thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm honored to have you as a guest and I look forward to this conversation. So tell me a little about yourself and about what you do. Yes, um, I have been teaching uh, for 10 years. I've been tutoring for over 25 and along the way, um, I have had an, uh, a diagnosis for my son with autism, which is audio processing disorder. It's very unique. It's a one in a million type diagnosis. So within the process of helping my son, I have um, come across and stumbled upon some other um, helpful methods and therapies for him. And so um, also I struggle with ADHD. Um, I am probably to the nth degree as far as ADHD. And also I have um, dyslexia. I have a couple of different types of dyslexia that I've had to overcome. And during that time period with helping my son and helping myself uh, study better and read better and comprehend better, um, I have found some really unique um, ideas and methods that have uh, been streamlined to save time for you to read better and help your uh, kid read better. And so um, today I'm hoping that I can uh, help many more people, hopefully millions of people um, get the help they need, um, save a bunch of money, um, you know, take a lot of that stress away that we find when we're trying to help um, our child focus, because uh, like you were saying earlier, Stacy, um, dyslexia isn't anything that they can help. Um, ADHD, if you have it, you know, there's no way to really focus until you gather those skills, until you practice those skills, until that you're aware of, you know, what you can do and what the possibilities are. That's, that's a huge component. And so, um, uh, there's a lot of information out on the internet, um, and of and I think it's wonderful that we're in an age where we can get lots of different information, but it's confusing to know what's going to work. So at the beginning, um, I do want to go ahead and um, share this with you so that if you're listening to the, this podcast or if you are um, on YouTube, you can see and um, zone in on this um QR code and also the name of the website is flashcardread.com. So um, that's some of the things that um, you know will be covered in the website is, you know, what is it? Why is my kid struggling? Uh, what's happening? Um, and I can help uh, coach you as well. Um, I also have a free 30 minute consultation where I can kind of help coach you. So if you're not quite sure, I'm on Facebook as well with Para Education Solutions. So if that helps you and you just need a little, you know, maybe you need to vent of like <laughs> all of this information and all these diagnoses and all these things that are happening, maybe you just need to um, just tell me what's going on so that I can help you um, bridge that gap in between the information and maybe some therapies that would help would help you. I would be glad to do that. As a as a parent myself, I struggled. <clears throat> excuse me for many years, and um, it was upsetting. Um, you know, not being able to know what to do right away. <clears throat> excuse me. So we tried several things, and uh, I noticed what worked best was to simplify. And mm -hmm. so some of the ways to do that is to um, write the word really big on a card. And then just to focus in and take pictures. And over time, um, you might flash this word territorial um, 15 times. And for those of you that are living, listening on podcast, you can't see me flash the word 
to Miss Stacy uh, 15 times, but um, as I'm flashing to her, she's taking a picture with her brain. And as she's taking a picture, as I'm flashing it, um, she's memorizing, you know, at kind of against her will, uh, <laughs> the phonetic pattern behind the word. And over time, as we practice um, a couple of times a day, we actually start building our own phonetic patterns. And ones that are being represented in school and taught in school are now making sense um, over practicing flashing words. And I, like I said, I accidentally stumbled on this flashing technique and um, it seems simple and it is, but over time, your brain is so incredible. It's so vast that it's able to take that information from that word and help assimilate it. So those of us that flip words or read from uh, left to right, um, I'm sorry, right to left instead of left to right can right. now focus in on that word and start assimilating it in the right direction. So over time, and then you practice writing it, um, your brain is actually centering it. And if throughout life, we're constantly trying to center information. And that's why when um, there's a director filming, he's constantly putting up his his hands to center the information and to focus in on that. And that's the genius part about the flash method is it helps you focus first and yes. then it helps you capture all of the letters and then it helps you spell them to reinforce that information staying into that long-term memory in your writing bank, which is held in a different part of the brain. So also what's happening is your frontal lobe um, is actually holding the information kind of in a short-term memory. So mm -hmm. sometimes when you're flashing the word, you can actually close your eyes and you can still see that word in your mind's eye. That's amazing. You know, I, I feel like a lot of times when parents, you know, we're, we're as, as mothers, as parents, you know, we, we um, don't, we're not, we're not prepped for this, you know, like we, we're, you know, you get pregnant, you're, you're both happy or, you know, you're happy, you know, you have the child, you don't plan for these things to happen. So when they do happen, it, it's overwhelming and it's like, oh my gosh, you know, my child has a problem, you know, what am I going to do? Because when you read the 12 months, you know, what to expect kind of book, they just tell you what to expect the first. 12 months, but they don't tell you about the rest of your life, you know, uh, you know, with your child. And so when you are, you have these obstacles in front of you and can be really overwhelming and people just don't know where to begin. And like you mentioned before, which was a really good comment is that there are so many things out there and some of this stuff is a little bit misleading. Some of this stuff is misguided. Some of this stuff doesn't work, you know, and some of this stuff is great, but it's like, how do you know, as a parent, how do you know where to start? And, you know, what are your suggestions when your child, you know, is diagnosed with a disability and you're starting to see the signs and the symptoms, if you do see the signs and the symptoms and your child is diagnosed, you know, where do you begin? So if your child has dyslexia or if your child has ADHD or autism, you know, and, and your child has these challenges, you know, what are your suggestions on what are the first steps that a parent should take to get them started on the right path? You should definitely talk to your uh, primary doctor for your child and, and then tell them of your concerns. Um, if you see dyslexic patterns or uh, traits, you know, <clears throat> there's a lot of information on the internet and there's checklists to go off of, you know, you could take one in to your doctor and say, I see this, this, and this, and this, and I don't mean to be, you know, overprotective or whatever, right. but I want to say that um, I'm seeing a lot of these patterns. And that would help the doctor, you know, because they see, you know, hundreds of patients a week um, yeah. of, of pinning that down and saying, right. okay, um, can we, um, you know, look at this deeper? And also you might want to mention, hey, you know, my child has attention problems. I try to get my child to clean their room. All I do is keep coming out and saying that it's overwhelming and there's too much. And that's actually one of the traits um, of ADHD. If the child has a messy room and they can't seem to get in there and, and, and organize, I mean, that for me is really difficult as well. I have to learn how to simplify it, 
take chunks of it so I don't get overwhelmed. And those are some of the things that you can, you know, ask uh, a professional about a doctor about. You can also um, get, um, ask your school to, if they have testing and if it's available to you, um, it's always good to get a diagnosis of what kind of dyslexia it is. Um, but if you're not, you know, privy to that and you, you need to get something going, um, I can definitely help you uh, for two weeks to try it out. And if it's something that um, you're having a hard time paying for or whatever, you can email me and we can work out, you know, the difference and I can um, help uh, parents who are having um, problems with uh, payment and things like that, because we're in a really struggle time right now with the economy yeah. being the way it is. So I don't mm -hmm. want to dissuade anyone. And yeah. I want to help as many people as I can, because um, I feel like I would want to be treated that way. I would want somebody to take me by the hand and show me, you know, another way and how to help my child. Because like I said, there wasn't any roadmap when I was there. Um, yeah. I kept trying different things. I would go to um, Barnes and Noble. I would sit there with all the autism books and I would just read, read, read while my child was playing with the train set, you know? And yeah. So I don't know about you, but you know, I, there wasn't enough information out there. I just read everything I could get my hands on. Right. Um, and I would suggest, you know, reading that, but also discriminating against the, the hype and, you know, the making money schemes of, you know, that sort of thing of it. And, you know, you can be cured because, um, that's not always, you know, the case that's hardly ever the case. Yeah. Um, so you just have to like, you know, discriminate enough as a parent and go, you know, this, not that. And, um, if they let you try it, um, definitely. And it's not harmful to your child. I mean, you can try different methods, um, right. see what works, but like I said, I'm, I'm really trying to, um, educate parents. That's the most important step is to yeah. educate yourself on it and know that your kid's doing the best that they can. Um, they don't want to have low attention. They want to do well in school. Everyone wants to succeed on some level, you know, and sure. a lot of um, dyslexic kids struggle with behavior because, you know, people might have given up on them and yeah. their confidence level is shot. So they don't, they don't want to try anymore. And so a lot of these children that I meet, are just like, I don't even know if I can give you five seconds, lady, you know, I'm ready to jump ship. So, yeah. uh, so part of it is, you know, building that relationship, having those little rewards in place for parents as they're starting out. And then as, as they're rewarding their kid, the rewards get into confidence instead. And yes. so you pull back those rewards a little bit more and you can get into, look at you, you're amazing. You, your mind is, is just, is just able to read so much better. And look, you're reading on a second grade level instead of, um, you know, a kindergarten level. And so those rewards are much bigger. They're much, you know, more wanted for the child. So I find that very exciting. And, um, that's what keeps me awake at night. <laughs> that's what keeps me <laughs> sleeping is the excitement of helping these kids, you yeah. know, get to their goals because they, they really do want to succeed. And I know the parents want it and half the time we're getting in their way because we're telling them to pay attention more and, um, you know, do this, do that. And we really, you know, feel like we don't know what we're doing. Yeah. Um, and, and it's hard. And, uh, I looked into um, a lot of um, programs and things like that, and they're wonderful. I mean, they are changing lives, but they do take, you know, a commitment and they do take a lot of time to learn. And so I do understand the frustration and I'm only, you know, a small component to the grander scheme of where they're going with everything, but yeah. I hope that they use me and then they don't need me anymore. That's my goal. Yes. That, build that bridge so that I can get out of your way so that you can get on to the other challenges, the other obstacles that um, maybe the disability or the neurodiversity as we're calling it now, um, which I like a whole lot better than disability. We're just wired differently, you know, neurodiversity. Yeah. Um, and I know that I'm wired differently. And instead of being upset about it, I think we should celebrate it. I think we should educate people on it. And I think, like you said earlier, it's so important 
to um, make people aware and to get the message out there and to build these bridges because the kids are so worth it. And it's so easy once we find these things at work. I mean, why not? Why not get it out there? Why not? You know, and I, and I realized somebody might even steal my idea. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't even care at this moment because if it helps some kids out, if it keeps them in school, if it puts their confidence level, if it keeps them out of jail, if it keeps them happy on a new path, let's do it. Let's do whatever it takes to get them from point A to point B because um, neurodiversity isn't something that's upsetting. It's actually quite exciting. Some of our best minds like Einstein could not read well. Yeah. Yeah. You know, some of our brightest, um, I think Steve Jobs even had trouble. So, I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on. We have, um, we have, um, so many different, um, minds that we, we need to build this bridge for because they're, they are neurodiverse and they're geniuses. And all we have to do is tap into that to get that information out there and to get that, those ideas to change the world. Right. Of course. Yes. This is, you know, this is amazing. It it gets me really excited when you talk about it because it's like so many parents, you know, don't, you know, don't know where to go and don't know where to begin and don't know what to do. And you're giving them, you're giving them a program that they could actually utilize. And I love the fact that you say that, you know, you just want, you know, your goal is to get them to the point where they, they don't need you anymore. And that's a good coach because that's the objective of a coach is to be able to give them the tools, the resources, the strategies, implement them in their daily lives to the point where it becomes natural. And then they utilize them and then they can move on to the next step in life. And it's kind of like you said, it's like building a bridge and then just getting over that bridge and then you know journeying on to your new path and it's so important and you know and I'm also think one of the things you mentioned to me earlier too which I was you know I didn't even know myself was that there are so many different types of dyslexia out there there is you know when people hear dyslexia they they just think of the standard dyslexia but they don't realize that there are so many different types and in most of these dis- disabilities have more than one type they're just broken you know that's just the word but most disabilities are broken up into different types you have people who have specific types where they have specific names or they might be different levels uh, you know and, and they have they might be more chronic or they might be more slight and and you know and they have names for different types and and you know there's so much to learn and there's so much to understand and having a coach is really great because they have a not a knowledge of really helping you understand breaking things into more simplistic terms and to really I mean helping you too because as a parent sometimes we feel powerless and I think that's the worst feeling in this world in the world is seeing your child str- struggle and you can't do anything about it except comfort them, try to find knowledge to help them. But, you know, you don't want to see that for your child. So learn these tools and understanding what's going on, especially is the key, understanding what's going on and then getting the resources and the tools to actually implement into your, your daily lifestyle with your child so they can actually move forward. Now, from your own perspective, using this program, how have you seen children excel and change from one one point to to the next point? So some of the transitions that I've seen um, with children is they start off with um, the word like fluidly, right? And it, of course, it's when they're littler, you know, it'll be smaller words, but we actually jump up to uh, bigger words um, pretty quickly. And the reason why is because um, there's really no difference when you're spelling and you're capturing um, different words. After a while, after the mind gets used to it, it it progresses pretty fast. And so the goal is by using the program, um, you'll notice you'll go from flashing to phonetically sounding out and they get braver um, as the weeks go by and sounding out more words. And I always suggest They do a chapter book or a book that they're comfortable, like Dr. Seuss, um, Fox and Fox, where you have to rhyme a lot of words and they pick up really quickly. And once they read um, the book over and over again, as they're practicing the words, they're actually um, doubling up um, like exercise. You know, you're not just doing weight training, you're also doing cardio too. So um, with that extra strength in their brain, then they're using all the parts and they're stimulating like literally 
five different senses at once, yeah. you know, um, it's lighting up like a Christmas tree in there and you're reinforcing all of this um, new information. Um, so some kids progress in one month where they're, they're reading and they're, you know, snapping two and they're gaining, um, I guess reading levels are going up. Yeah. Uh, and then we're seeing, you know, month by month that going incrementally. I've had one child um, that I'm thinking of specifically where she graduated like out in six months. And she was like, why am I coming to see you anymore? You know, <laughs> I don't need to do this. You're just a, a memory, you know, and I was glad to yeah. hear it. But I was like, hey, can you come back just to sit in and help the others now? And she was like, oh, to teach. And I was like, yeah, can you can you come back and teach the others, you know, what you learned? And she was like, absolutely. So once I turned it around, you know, she was back in it and willing to help. And then she would challenge herself even more to harder words like hippopotamus or supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. You know, it was like yeah. a, you know, a challenge game. So I never know when they're going to hit pay dirt and when they're going to graduate, but I kind of see signs along the way. They start uh, reading signs on the side of the road. They start asking you questions, you know, like, mom, what's the word wine mean? And you're like, oh no, I don't want you to learn that word, <laughs> but they <laughs> see it on the side of the road and they're starting, you know, to pick up things off signs. And they're like, what does lawyering mean? You know, and um, yeah. so you'll, you'll start seeing signs of them um, having more confidence to try out more words. And then, then when they ask what the context is, you'll realize that the um, not only are they able to spell it, but they're, they're trying to figure out how it applies. Right. And once that starts happening, then we start seeing comprehension go up as well because they're no longer struggling with phonetic sounding out. So one little girl um, in about three to four months time, somewhere in between there, um, her reading level was like nine words a minute. Wow. So, and it was, it was heartbreaking for, um, the teacher because I didn't know what to do and the mom didn't know what to do. So I got in there and we did the flashcards. And then I said to the mom, I said, okay, every morning, every afternoon, if you hit it, and then you guys read in the evening, I said, this is going to go away, you know, because the kid has all the foundational pieces in there and yeah. she wants to do it. She's got low attention span, but that's going to improve too with the focus. So they did it like a religion, you know, and they did it five days a week out of the seven and then went up from, you know, F's and D's to A's and B's in a six week period. Right. Wow. So it was, you know, when you commit, you gotta, you gotta go wholeheartedly. You gotta go at it from all angles. You gotta sure up the sides and, uh, but once you commit, you know, the sky's the limit and next year there's no flashing. It's all gone. Like, I'm just going to be a distant memory. Yeah. And that's it, awesome. Now it is awesome because that's what you want. That's what you want. And that's, that's the goal, you know, because you want them to grow. You want them to get past that point. You know, right, right. now they're stuck in a certain, you know, dilemma. And once they learn how to overcome that, you know, then it's, it's, you know, they can move forward and start, you know, excelling. And that's definitely the goal. Now, is there, is there something um, like, do you practice with them and then they go home and they, they do exercises at home also to help them excel as well? So to take all of the leg work out for the parents, um, I suggest that they watch the videos that I do for them. So just like I'm sitting in front of you, I yeah. am really on video doing this for the child. Oh. Okay. And at the end of 15 times, I cover it up and I say, pause it and they pause it and then they write it and then um, they unpause and then they check and see if they got it right. And then oh. if they did, they back up the video to wherever, you know, a little bit where, the, where I started that word and then they practice it again because it's in the practice that makes the jello stick to their brain. I see. They oh, need wow. time to process and the mistakes, um, they need to be allowed to practice making mistakes. Yes. And uh -huh. they, through that, and once they build up their uh, cadence, it's amazing. Um, they usually go through a whole entire week. Um, some of them are reporting to me right now on the videos that half a week in, they're done. And they ask me, well, what should we do for the rest of half a week? I'm like, 
go to yeah. four, you know, go to week four. You do not have to wait, you know, an entire, you know, week in order to start the new week. And they yeah. were like, really? and I said, no, I said, you know, this, this program, the flash method is just for you. We're catering it to you, to your child. So, you know, mom if, and dad, if you think you can keep going and the kid is chomping at the bit, let him out, you know, let's do it. And then yeah. so I, some kids and um, that started off in week one and the, um, the words were too easy. So we stepped right. them up week two and those were too easy. So then we stepped up to week three and so on and so forth until we finally get the right fit. And we finally get that right stretch in the rope where there's some tension there and then there's a challenge and then it's perfect for the kid. I love that. I love that. I, I think it's so important, um, you know, that the, the children are able to process this. And what I love about it um, is that you make it very easy for them to process it because especially with the videos, I know I always was a better visual learner. And, and so when I saw things, and I practiced them visually, I caught on to it a lot quicker, always caught on to it a, a lot quicker. And, um, and then I noticed that about a lot of, a lot of children with uh, disabilities is that they, they catch on quickly when it's visual and when they see it visually, they, it, it's so much easier and they retain it and they, they, they get it, you know, after practicing it, you know, for so many times, you know, they start to, it really starts to, to under, they understand it. And then they see the pattern of how it's done. And yes. then they're able to put two and two together and then they can utilize that with different words and different sentences and they're, they're, everything is starting to, you know, fall into place. And right. I, I see that with, with, a, with a lot of, a lot of children too. And it's, uh, you know, it's just understanding, you know, the, the pattern and like, you know, okay, I get it. Now she's doing this and this, and I'm supposed to do this. And, and then it, it's repetitive. And so it's really building into the brain. And I think that, you know, just like any human being, if you ever notice, if you don't utilize something, you forget it. So that's why they say like, if you're going to do a test, you know, you know, take the test right away after you learn the course, because, you know, after so, so long, you'll forget it if you don't utilize it. So by consistently okay. utilizing it and understanding it, it, and it gets to a point where if you practice so much, it becomes a part of you and then you don't forget it. You know, and those are the things that I think retain in your brain the best is, is that when you're consistently doing something that you have to utilize all the time, not just for a test, you know, but it becomes, it's a, it's something, an important part of your, your life, you know, that you need to understand in order to move forward. It becomes natural after a while. Absolutely. I'm a big proponent for making mistakes and practicing. And I think if we could have more time in education to do that, um, I think we would see a lot more growth. But with pacing guides, I mean, God bless the teachers and our administration. Um, you know, they suffer from having to follow us, uh, you know, what everyone else is doing. Um, yeah. so, um, I would encourage parents, you know, to, to know that we play a pivotal point in our child's education because they're strapped for time. Um, they're strapped, you know, for money at all times. And we are on the cutting edge of just kind of understanding education, you know, things are evolving and changing so quickly. So they're trying best they can. And um, I'm so grateful um, that I work with such a great dynamic team in schools, um, but their hands are tied too, because they have to find and do things, you know, within those rule groups, you know, and those laws now. So um, I would definitely encourage um, parents to keep reading and keep trying and keep going because um, it, it can be very upsetting because things don't seem to catch up to our needs. Yeah. And I think every, with every child, they, they run at a different pace. So you have to be patient. And I, I think, you know, parents have to be patient with their child. And um, I think also we have to understand too, that the, I love the fact that you mentioned rewards and, you know, and because it's so important to reward your child when they do something good, because when, if you, if you point out the mistakes and you, and you, and you make them feel bad, or you make them feel like they're, they're, they're not smart and they're not doing something good. That's how they're going to feel about themselves. And it's going to affect their self-esteem. It's going to affect their self-worth. And then they're not going to want to try, but if you reward them, even if they get the answer wrong, good job. That's a great, you know, that's a great way that you try one you letter know? off. Yeah. One letter I, off. That's all it was. I, Keep going. 
Yeah, exactly. And that makes such a difference. I've seen parents, you know, really get really on top of their children. And some of those parents were very negative when their child did something wrong. And, and then you have the parents that are positive and rewarding. And what a difference when you praise your child and when you point out the mistakes, it be, they become two different people when you grow up. You know, I've seen people that are so that have become so intelligent and their parents did not praise them. Their parents always pointed out their mistakes. And to this day, it has affected their self-worth and self-esteem. And then you have parents that have always, you know, praised their child, always have rewarded their children. And they just excelled because they felt good about themselves. And it's OK to make mistakes and it's OK not to get it the first try. You know, and that's why they say, if you, if you don't get it, try, try and try again, you know, and, and that's what it's all about, you know, and it's so important, you know, that parents understand that and parents also utilize that into their, you know, parenting skills, because it's, it's so important to praise your child, even if your child is not where you want them to be, or they're making mistakes, you need to really praise them. And, you know, I always praised my child, you know, and no matter what their struggles were and what they were going through, you know, when they were having tough times learning, I always praised them. And it, it worked because, you know, they, they were able to, the problems they were having in school, you know, with learning, they were able to overcome it. And, and there was a certain point at a certain grade that they just, everything started to click and then they move forward. And, you know, that's what you want for your child, but you have to be, you have to be, I think, you know, you can give me your thought but on it, but you have to not be in denial. You have to accept that your child has a, a learned disability or has a, any type of disability. And then you have to work with your child and then just, you know, do the exercises, do the things you need to do and then praise them every time they try, you know, what are your thoughts? Yeah. The, the hard part is once you get um, you know, you go through the checklist and you realize that, Hey, I've got a problem. We've got a problem. We've got to figure out what to do. Um, it is, it is good to get a strategy down and some, some of us need like support groups. And so there are support groups online. There's some on Facebook, there's some on Instagram. You know, there's so many things out there that you can get, um, support from. Um, I think I'm belong, I belong to a group called dyslexia struggles or something on Facebook, which is really cool. And, um, they educate people on so many uh, different aspects of it that I even wouldn't have thought about. So right. I think it's important to, um, you know, if you need a support group, um, you know, tell your family members about it, um, try to get support and say, look, you know, I'm going to need you in the morning you know, to help me with the flash method. I just need you to get the kid on the computer or on the iPod, iPad. And I just need you to just make sure that you're, you know, doing the rewards after he finishes and then ask him how he feels and how he did or whatever. And then you're done, you know, just little, just ask them for little things like that um, and get some support as you're doing it. I'm listening to parents, you know, ask me, am I doing it right? If you're getting your kid on and you're trying you're doing it right. If you're right. making sure that they're going back and, and uh, redoing some of the words when they're, instead of skipping ahead, you're doing yes. it right. So um, you also need to, I think as parents reward yourself for getting out there and trying and, and doing these things for your child, because as we know, I mean, the schools and the school district can only do so much. Um, you are your child's first teacher. Um, and that's hard for parents to understand. And, but I love the empowerment of it. I love helping uh, parents discover that about themselves. And I love educating them on how to help more positively and in better ways and in intervals, because, you know, kids only have short attention spans. So um, I think that that's the most important component is just kind of like saying, hey, we're here and we yes. want to be here. Yes. How do we get from point A to point B and making that plan? Exactly. Now, if you had to take today's conversation and you had to emphasize on a couple of important aspects, what are some of the things you'd like the listeners to understand from our conversation today? Um, be patient. Um, the moment of uh, conception is the moment of release. So the moment that you're able to calm yourself and help your child and to get in there, um, just to try things out. Um, the more patience you have um, and just practice it, 
the patience is the biggest component and to keep going. Um, you're going to have naysayers that go, what are you doing? Um, you just kind of let them say whatever they're going to say and just keep going because right. you're going to find the way that best works for your child. Like I had a parent say, I love your videos, but I needed to do the flashcards. So I took the words. I hope you don't mind, uh, Mrs. Para, but I went ahead and I made my own cards and I started flashing them and that worked the best. And I said, wow, you're amazing. You made your own adaptation. And that's what I would have done too. And then, you know, I'm kind of reinforcing that you've got to be your advocate for your child. You have to figure out what works best. And the fact that she knew that about her child was just amazing. So there's so many different ways you can help your kid. Um, and they, once you start, you won't stop. Like once you get on this plane and this train with your kid, um, yeah. be building those bridges, you will be asking teachers um, to accommodate possibly in the classroom. Um, you know, can you go over those directions one more time? Or can you write it on the board in red because my kid reads better in red or whatever. So yeah. um, advocating, you know, for that, those asking for those things is the parent's job, mom, dad, you know, just have patience and just keep chipping away because that's going to be the secret of success. Uh, right. My child's now 23, living on their own. We never thought that was going to happen. You know, we were like, there was there was a, a depression stint, but I can tell you, if you keep chipping away and trying to find um, different avenues, um, you'll find the solutions that you're looking for because your heart's in it, your passion's in it, and then your tenacity um, is so important. Yeah. Oh, definitely. A hundred percent. Now tell everybody a little bit about the services that you provide. So, um, the first time we meet, um, would be, you know, the 30 minute free consult here. Um, they can go and uh, message me on Facebook and what that would include is, um, time to figure out, you know, how I can help your child. Like if you say, you know, my kid has this, this, and this disability, I'm going to be upfront with you. I'm not going to waste your time, you know, with, I think this can work, you know? Um, but also at the same time, if you think that it can, and you try it out and you want to give me feedback on my website, um, that's cool too. Because like I said, I don't have all the answers. No one does. Um, this yeah. is, this dyslexia stuff, um, is, is fairly new. We're, finally coming around to realizing, Hey, there's 20% of us that have some kind of dyslexic, um, problems and yes. a lot of us are overcoming them in the school environment, but a lot of us aren't, and we're not right. reading, like you said, on a sixth grade level. So how do we accommodate that? And that's what we talk about during that consult is we, we just, you tell me the story of your child. You tell me maybe even a little bit of history about yourself because sometimes it's genetic. So, mm -hmm. um, whatever you want to share with me, we just kind of spill it out on the table and we mill around the beans and we kind of look at what's going on to yeah. hopefully help better. And the more that, you know, you're able to share on target, the better I can go, Hey, you know, I have had experience with that type of issue. And this, these are some of the things that I found helpful. Um, but, and, and it's free, you know, they can just, figure it out and it's free. It's awesome. And they can also, um, email me at flashcard, uh, .com and they can, um, reach out to me that way. Um, whenever it's convenient, they can put in a phone number if they want, I can, um, call them on the phone and we can talk about, um, you know, the, the hurdles and there's been a lot of, um, heartache, you know, with, with, past experiences with their child being in school and not yeah. having success. So a lot of times we spend the first 15 minutes just talking and hashing it out about how things have kind of like failed them. Yeah. So, and that's okay. I mean, that's part of the process of healing and finding great solutions. Yeah. Oh, I love this. I love this. Now, what is your website address that people can go to? Okay. It is right here flashcardread.com. I love it. And the Facebook is para education solutions. 
So if they want to book, um, I also help adults too. So, yeah. So a lot of times we'll get to helping the child and the adult will say, wow, I'm only reading on a fifth grade level or a fourth grade level. I want to learn more and it's genetic. So I will also coach and help them as well. So, um, and it's, it's a stigma. People who can't read well, um, are always trying to like, uh, mask it and cover it up and yeah. it's hard on them too. So I, I help them as well. I love it. This is amazing. You are amazing. You know, we need more people like you because I know so many people, even adults that struggle with reading. I have people that you know, I know that have dyslexia. They have a really tough time. You know, they have apps on their phones. They, they do the best they can, but they still struggle. And, you know, and having this program, I think is amazing. And, you know, I think, you know, people have to really, you know, um, utilize all areas possible. So if you see your child struggling, or even if you're an adult and you're struggling, you really need to look into programs like this. Now, do you have a specific name for this program where you just go onto your website and everything is there? Um, it's, it's called the flash method, but um, I made it simple to understand. So when they do Google searches and they forget if you just put in flashcard read, it will lead you right to my um, site. So if you forget everything, just remember flashcard read. I love it. This has been amazing. Um, Kimberly, you are amazing. And I'm so glad you're doing this because yes, because there's so many people out there that struggle from disabilities. And there are so many people out there that have dyslexia and have ADHD and have other disabilities. And, you know, they, a lot of them feel alone. A lot of them feel embarrassed to talk about it. A lot of them want to get help, but they don't know where to go. And with this program, you make it very easy for people to get on the right track, build a foundation and get over those obstacles that they're dealing with on a daily basis. So I want to thank you for coming on the show and thank you for, you know, telling everybody about your program about what you do. And I'd love to have you again on the show and we could talk more about this because you are very special in my heart because I struggle from a disability. I have children that have a disability and they were able to overcome it. You know, they're learning disabilities and it's people like you who really spend time to really teach these children you know, and, and even adults, you could make a, you could change someone's life. And I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. You have a great day. Thank you again for coming on the show. I appreciate it so much. Thank you, Stacey. Have a good day. You too.